They Live is a John Carpenter classic, released in 1988. This sci-fi thriller is quite entertaining and delivers on suspense, plot, and of course, thrill. In this video, we're going back in time just for a bit and fully recap what this movie is all about. There are spoilers ahead, so you better watch out. John Nada is a wanderer who leaves Colorado for a better life. Arriving with everything he needs on his back, he checks the local unemployment office for work, but to no avail. Through his meager charms, he manages to secure a job on a construction site in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. As the final whistle signals the end of his day, a co-worker, Frank, recognizes him as the new arrival and offers shelter for the night. It isn't fancy, just a place to rest his head in the local encampment a few blocks away. Unlike the political protests he's seen on TV, this gathering is born of hardship, not activism. Most residents are ordinary folks, victims of foreclosure and unemployment, who band together for survival. They've built shelters, run a soup kitchen, and even shared resources like generators. There were agitators, preachers, and others with agendas in the camp. The usual talk of them, powerful puppeteers keeping everyone down, fills the air. Soon, Nada learns the local church is a front for a secretive organization. The local TV is also occasionally interrupted by a pirated signal carrying the warnings of a bearded conspiracy theorist. Nada learns that this signal is coming from the church. This is where things start to get heightened. Picked by curiosity, Nada sneaks into their basement during a meeting and stumbles upon a strange trove. In the trove lay boxes of oversized sunglasses and a collection of pamphlets. Puzzled but intrigued, he hides some in the crawl space and returns to the encampment. Not as not done processing his earlier encounter when heavily armed police, supported by helicopters and bulldozers, storm the encampment. They dismantle the tents and infiltrate the church. After the chaos, Nada makes his way back to the church in the morning and retrieves the box. Curiosity driven, Nada slips on the sunglasses, an act that will later lead to his doom. He sees billboards and advertisements blare subliminal messages in bold flashing letters. A billboard on which a bikini clad woman pitches vacations in the tropics says, marry and reproduce. A dollar bill says, this is your God, says a dollar bill. And on the newsstands magazines, slogans like honor apathy and obey are put forth. The hypnotic commands echo everywhere, even on television, where the seemingly benign news anchor's face morphs into an alien visage. But does one need oversized sunglasses to see what Nada has seen? He realizes that the richest, most powerful people in Los Angeles happen to be ugly, skeleton-faced aliens. He confronts them, but they call for backup using their fancy watches and jewelry. As Nada corners one, it vanishes with a touch of its watch. Suddenly, they are coming for him. He flees into dark alleys, chased by police who are aliens in disguise. They offer him a chilling choice. Join them or be eliminated. When they try to arrest him, Nada fights back, disarming and shooting several alien officers but he hesitates when faced with a human cop, refusing to kill his own. Now branded a fugitive, Nada's face is plastered across every screen in the city. Smells like huge trouble, but there's more coming. Armed with a shotgun and police gear, Nada enters a bank. He quickly identifies several disguised aliens in the bank. In a memorable line, he declares, I'm here to kick butt and I'm all out of options. He shoots several aliens and takes Holly Thompson, a human woman, hostage. They flee in her car, with Nada keeping low to avoid detection. Holly demands to know their destination, but Nada insists on going to her place. Reaching her luxurious hilltop home, he discreetly exits the car, pretending to be her new boyfriend to avoid suspicion. Fearing the armed Nada, Holly attempts a casual conversation, but he warns her against dishonesty. 
he asks about her job, and she says she works at the local TV station, which he recognizes as a target of the resistance. Trying to gain her trust, he reveals the truth about the alien invasion, but realizes it sounds crazy. Holly, seemingly tense, asks to get a drink. Nada allows it, but as his back is turned, Holly smashes a bottle over his head, sending him through the patio door in a dramatic fall. Believing him dead, Holly calmly calls the police. Nada reaches the bottom of the hill, bruised and with some cuts, but he's alive. He returns to the garbage-strewn alleyway where he hid his box of sunglasses in a trash can, only to find it gone. A garbage truck had just emptied the cans. Nada climbs into the back of the truck and rummages through the trash, eventually finding his sunglasses. He walks away, but is stopped by Frank, who offers him his pay for the construction job. Frank is a cynic, a man who recognizes that the world is unfair. Nada shares the revelation about the aliens. He tries to force Frank to put on the sunglasses, but Frank fights back. The duo enter a street brawl, and in the end, an exhausted, bloody-faced Nada sticks the sunglasses onto the face of Frank, who is barely conscious. Frank, who was initially skeptical, becomes convinced upon seeing the messages himself, and they form an uneasy alliance forward. Frank and Nada, seeking a safe haven, find shelter in a run-down hotel. They need a moment to catch their breath and decide their next move. Nada, concerned about the strange glasses, warns Frank not to wear them too long as they cause headaches. Left alone in the dingy room, despair weighs heavily on Frank. He's unsure how to fight. To offer comfort, Nada shares a painful memory from his childhood. He reveals a history of abuse at the hands of his father. This experience, he explains, fuels his hatred for the alien invaders who now control Earth. He sees them as oppressive figures, determined to control him once again. Fearing the aliens will target the remaining church members, Nada and Frank find Gilbert. Gilbert is a fellow fugitive from the homeless camp. He invites them to a secret meeting with the resistance movement. There, they receive special contact lenses that reveal the alien's true form without the discomfort of sunglasses. Gilbert explains the alien's plan to change Earth's climate to suit their needs. Nada reunites with Holly at the meeting, apologizing for their previous violent encounter. She reciprocates, acknowledging her own mistake. But is Holly sorry? Is she really an ally? Unfortunately, the SWAT team crashes the meeting, shooting everyone involved. Holly escapes the chaos, as do Frank and Nada. Luckily, they manage to ditch Holly before things get worse. Stuck in an alley shootout, Frank and Nada blast some aliens and snatch one of their fancy watches, which can teleport them anywhere. In a desperate move, Nada activates the watch, creating a random portal they leap into without any idea where it leads. Lost in a dark tunnel, Nada and Frank stumble upon strange signs hinting at an alien base. Determined to investigate, they hide their weapons and blend in at a lavish banquet where humans collaborate with the aliens for wealth and power. To their shock, they encounter the grizzled man from the homeless camp, transformed into a bearded, tuxedo-clad VIP who flaunts his access. The bearded man smugly guides them through the alien facility. He shows Frank and Nada the perk of joining the organization. One perk includes teleportation to stunning vacations on distant planets. He then brings them to the broadcast center of Cable 54, which continuously feeds false information to the sleeping human population, but is surprised when the two rebel and detonate bombs within the facility. In the office building, Nada and Frank encounter Holly. Together, they climb to the rooftop, aiming to disable the alien transmitter. But they're in for a surprise. Holly is an enemy. She betrays them shooting Frank in the head with a hidden pistol. Nada reaches the rooftop, calling for Frank. Instead, he's answered by Holly, who aims her gun at him. Holly reveals Frank isn't coming, and Nada realizes he's been tricked. 
a helicopter team closes in, and Nada, cornered, shoots Holly before successfully firing his gun directly into the alien transmitter, destroying it in a burst of sparks. Dying on the rooftop, Nada raises a defiant middle finger to the sky as the alien's mind control signal is finally broken. The truth is then revealed in a shocking twist. At a local bar, patrons witness a stranger's transformation into a horrifying creature. Panic erupts as similar incidents unfold across the globe, with ordinary people suddenly becoming monstrous beings. The climax? In an intimate setting, a woman recoils in terror as her partner, mid-encounter, transforms into his alien form. His bewildered question, what's wrong, baby, hangs heavy in the air. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more movie recaps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.